Hey YouTube, what's going on? Welcome back to Marco Plays Risk. I'm Marco, I play Progressive Risk free for all at a master level. Today we are looking at one of my games that I played some days ago uh, on the command base C1X map. <laughs> this time I actually put the name of the map next to me so I can look it up while I am speaking. Um, this is a game I hosted. I personally really enjoy the space maps. And uh, this is one of my favorites, I would say. So this time while recording, I was uh, smart and put up the, uh, the settings. So I can read them to you right now. So we are on 70% uh, domination, which is one of my favorite game modes on the command base C1X map, uh, 60 seconds on the turn timer, of course ranked, progressive, balanced dice, no alliances, no fog of war, no blizzards, pretty vanilla settings. And I am in the fifth position. And here we see the continents, which I guess are sectors on this map. And the I mean, the, the obvious interesting part uh, about this map is that it's a circle. I know it's uh, crazy, um, but this makes it so that there are no corners. I know, again, what I'm inside, um, <laughs> but, but that uh, really sets it apart from other maps. So you can't really hide away somewhere. You always uh, have more than one um place of defense so at least two uh, and that makes the games very dynamic and you have to really think about your positioning which is why i really like this map in particular um i am not gonna go into too much detail just gonna tell you which i think uh, are the best sectors uh, once uh, this is sector H, uh, I find this is uh, very well defensible um, for a pretty hefty bonus. And there are not many good sectors next to it. So you're not like sector G is not a very good sector. No one will have sector G in the beginning. So you're not under any threat of getting attacked from here. Command center is also not very good. And then you have uh, sector C. Sector C is a pretty good uh, uh, continent on this map. Uh, so you will probably have to defend from there. Or maybe you can even uh, take it as an ex uh, expansion. So these two sectors are pretty good. Sector A is way too big for the early game. The plus 10 looks uh, nice on paper, but taking 14 territories in like three turns um, is way too many. Command centers in uh, the center and thus not very defensible. I don't think I've ever really seen anyone hold on to it for more like for more than like a turn. Sector B um, nine territories four plus eight is actually decent. It doesn't look uh, very good when you just look at the uh, the shape and the defensive positions, but I find that's actually um, quite defensible because three of your connections are uh, to sector A, uh, which no one will really hold. So some uh, light defenses here will do just fine. Command center also uh, same logic and sector C is one that Probably someone will uh, take early on, so you need kind of a strong guard here, but that's about it. So sector B also quite good. The uh, hangars, uh, in addition to sector D, uh, are decent. Uh, hangars A and B are relatively defensible. And uh, hangar A gives you a plus five. So that's pretty good for only three guard points. 
Sector D is also quite decent and I see most often uh, people who hold the hangar A will also hold the sector D because these just go very well together. Uh, because this one uh, defensive point pretty much just moves here and holds more territories with uh, the same amount of guard points. Um, sector E plus seven and three guard points, not as easy to take with 11 territories, but also quite a strong sector. And I go, uh, I see people go for uh, sector E quite a lot, and they seem to be almost always in a pretty solid position. And sector F is just decent. You have kind of uh, a lot guard points, um, but your only real enemy is sector E, command center, and sector G are not really too worrying. Uh, so this is also quite okay. If you have a good starting uh, position here, then it is okay to go for a sector F. It would, would not be my uh, recommended sector to go for, uh, but it's better than nothing. So that's kind of my breakdown on the sectors. So the first thing I look at when I start a game on this map is like sector H or sector F, I think it was, or one of the hangars. These are generally the points I want to start in. But I don't really see any good, um, any good starting positions for me. And I also get taken out here. So blue is gonna go for sector H here. Pretty sure. Uh, purple went for sector E, didn't quite finish it, but is almost uh, done with it. So this is really the strength of this sector that you can get it very quickly. While everyone else is still setting up their positions, you already gain your bonus troops. And um, one more thing that's quite interesting about this map is the amount of territories. You will already have seen that everyone is generating more than uh, three units because they are holding 12, 15 or more uh, territories, so they generate extra units off of that. Uh, so that is something that you have to keep an eye out for on this map. You always want to be at at least 12, preferably 15. How many uh, troops did I generate? Just want to check. 14, so I get a plus 6. Oh yeah, and I also generate uh, extra troops for going second to last, so I get one extra unit. And this is and kind of why I think that going in one of the last positions is quite a disadvantage because the players before me also generated like six, five or six troops because of the amount of uh, territories. And I already lost territories uh, during their turn. So overall, I feel like at a disadvantage for going uh, so late in the turn order and that is also why you see me attacking quite a lot right now because i want to keep my territory count high at at least 15 and i really wish you could see your uh, territory count somewhere but instead on 70 percent domination you only see uh, the percentage which is something they will hopefully fix at some point. Red is kind of spreading out, which I don't think is the correct play on this map. And Red is, seems to be going for sector G or maybe just um, 
making one attack for the card. I think one attack on this map is generally not enough. Because you will on average lose a lot of uh, territory on your opponent's turns. Um, so you want to uh, have a high territory count and then kind of fall down to 15 or something and get two extra units. That is generally uh, worth it, in my opinion. So yeah, um, blue going for this sector. Now you see purple uh, already in sector E for uh, one turn and generate it. Oh no, they only took it this turn. But next turn they will generate the plus five and then you may already be in trouble there. So that is the strength of this sector. Um, so green, what are you doing? Thank you for scrolling, scrolling up past me so we can see what's going on up there. So purple attacked quite a bit in here. Green seems to want to take this, but there's really no way this is going to happen with all this pressure from purple. I don't really see how that would ever go your way. Purple, uh, not purple, pink uh, is going for the hangar position. I think you should just put everything here, take these two and then guard against green. I think that would be the preferable play. Oh yeah, and now we see uh, pink rolling one at a time at the green uh, position. Sometimes I see people do that rolling like one at a time because you don't want to like put three troops there and then not be able to continue to attack but as we've seen that can go uh, very wrong i think i should be pulling this three up here just put two units here and then guard from here or there. I think that would help me taking this faster. I'm taking the slow route. So yeah, as I said, this is uh, 11 territories. So that's a very slow take, but luckily I have no one next to me. So I kind of have time to do it. So red, uh, can we see how many troops red generated real quick? Yeah, yeah, that is what I mean. Um, red only attacked once last turn. Now they're at 11 units, uh, 11 territories and only generate three units. So even one more attack last turn, which they definitely would have had the capacities for, would have generated them uh, one more unit this turn. And one unit uh, might not seem like a lot, but one unit over like three to five turns, is three to five units, I know, mind-blowing facts that I'm <laughs> spitting at you in this video, um, but that does make a difference. So on these uh, maps with lots of territories, I always uh, try and go for this um, territory count bonus. And red again doing only one attack, which quite frankly is not enough. So uh, red is now at 12, um, but they will probably 
lose this one to green, most likely. Or they will lose this one to pink. There's lots of possibilities for red to lose one more. Or they might even lose this to me. Also, purple didn't actually uh, attack me. Oh, blue is a bot. Okay, I see. I the, the entire time I was thinking blue was a player. But no, blue is a bot. And they take full advantage of purple. <laughs> oh, poor purple. That was a very uh, sudden and violent attack. But that is what the bots do sometimes. So purple was actually in a decent position, but I think they got too greedy. And we're thinking, okay, blue is probably gonna take the continent, but the bot had other plans. So pink. Pink now decides to go for the hangar position. Uh, hangar A, I think this is. Or is it hangar B? I think it's hangar B. Ro uh, rolling one on one is almost never a good decision, and they don't even finish this one, so. Uh, yeah. Not sure what that is about. Oh, no. Oh, I even could have gotten these in here sooner. Okay, some misplays from uh, my side as well. Now I have no guard here, but it is kind of unlikely that anyone uh, wants to break me. Green uh, could feasibly do it. But they would just waste a lot of units. Blue could do it, but blue is a bot. So green is only uh, really is. <laughs> Let me rewind that sentence. Green is only. Green is really the only player now. Now I got it. Who uh, could attack me? Um, but yeah, that would mostly be a waste. And purple is suddenly not in a good spot. Purple was the first one to take the continent. And now they suddenly seem pretty weak because, because bots. Bots can be very unpredictable. Now green wants to challenge the bot. Do you roll the 7 on 5? I don't think you want to do that. Like never do you ever want to do that. I don't even think challenging the bot there was uh, the correct play because blue is just gonna keep attacking. I'm kind of expecting blue to stack up here and just attack the 4 or the 5 because they can, because that is how bots operate. And I really don't understand why pink is not taking uh, the hangar. Hangar B. Very, very weird. Pink could have gotten this like three turns ago and they would have plus 15 troops. So now I get my bonus and I increase my guard, obviously. And this is kind of the natural expansion that you have from this position because you already have uh, one guard here anyway. So this guard goes here, you can take everything in between and you have more territories for the same price in guard points. And then 
uh, the next thing you probably want to uh, want to do is take this line right here and then you already have a second continent and i think that's also what i did this game i'm not quite sure okay purple what do you do purple probably wants to take back their continent yeah so that was a major setback for purple that blue attack was devastating the bot takes the first match that's also yeah and as i said they, they are just attacking the green force so challenging challenging the bot is a very very uh, risky um what was i gonna say yeah the uh, bots uh, often will take their matches quite early pretty much as soon as they can so holding back on your on your uh, matches when you um for as long as you can when there are bots in your lobby, that makes a lot of sense. I somehow got through that sentence. Um, I didn't actually check, but maybe Red actually did hold on to uh, 12 territories now. But they're still in a rough spot. I mean, they're not as bad off as like blue, but blue is a bot, so. Uh, and green. Green had a lot of uh, fighting and just lost four units and they are only one unit behind red right now. So yeah, that's why I'm saying more attacks on this map are often better not these one-on-one -on -one rolls though They're, that's just uh, don't don't do that and think take your damn bonus <laughs> why would you not take your bonus in the meantime i generate 13 units so at this point i feel invincible pretty much so i will expand while I can and just uh, take the advantage yeah so these two positions can match here I'm trying to be aggressive but not too aggressive I got uh, sevens as my defensive positions which is more than enough at this point. What you want to avoid when you are ahead is uh, spreading yourself too thin. Because then you're, if you're too aggressive, there can suddenly come a point where you don't have enough troops uh, to defend everything and then you get broken and then you suddenly have nothing. So that's what you have to try to avoid. So now the first matches will be taken. And as you can see, I'm already at 50 units just from holding uh, the sector for two turns. Additionally to the amount of um, territories that I hold. So right now I am definitely uh, in the lead by a lot. I don't really remember what happens after this, but I think I got a bit too greedy and I don't know if I actually won this game. But from this position, uh, it definitely looks pretty good for me. And all I really have to do is play it patiently 
I just, I could just sit back and uh, relax with these two continents for maybe two or three turns and accumulate value and then go on a killing spree when the time is right. But I may be a little too aggressive this game, but we'll see. I don't really clearly remember. Green is still going for this sector up here, which as I said, uh, it has 11 territories and they have been going at it for uh, a while, since turn one, basically. And they haven't finished it until turn six. Or are we on turn seven already? No, I think we are on turn, turn six, yeah. So that's why this sector is not very good, even though it looks very juicy. Is purple back in the game? Yeah, purple had a good uh, retaliation operation against blue, and blue is almost dead as a result. And I think I am thinking about killing blue right here. Blue has uh, three here, one there, and one here, two there. So this is easy. These are easy. This is, uh, this is not as easy. And this is also not as easy because red is kind of in the way. And now pink is finishing the hangars. It was long overdue. I don't know why the audio keeps cutting out. I am sorry for that. Don't know why that is the case. So now I, I think now I go to kill blue. But to be honest, I don't think I have to. Like w watching this back, I don't think I need this kill. I'm ahead by so much that even if someone else take, takes these uh, three cards, it's not gonna be a problem for me. And yeah, the thing that happens now as a consequence, I'm kind of losing my guard positions because I'm using them to attack. So even though I have more troops now, I may still be in a worse position. Oh, I I think I wanted to kill uh, Red here, but that does not work. Yeah, but I, I also uh, think I took the wrong path here. So yeah, was again a little bit over ambitious. That's that that tends to happen quite a bit for me. If I held back for another turn or two that would have been totally fine. And now I have no guards to speak of and it's super easy to break my continent. And yeah, I'm I'm left in an overall weaker position. And the audio is cutting out again. Don't know what's going on with this. Yeah, so red is counterattacking on me, which is fair enough. But I do have um, the additional cards and I'm not really under a threat of dying. At least I don't think so. I, st I still have about twice as many troops as my opponents. 
and the matches get big very soon. And now we actually see um, a kind of weak position for pink and purple and also red because they are all in one uh, contiguous position. Purple has one small thing here, but that's not an issue. Green is the most spread out, so green would be the hardest to kill right now. And pink holds two continents now, so they will generate a lot of units. And because of my over ambition, I uh, went from a uh, solid first place to like third. So that's something that I have to avoid. That's why you will see me very often uh, think about uh, my kills very long and hard. Because this is the situation I'm trying to avoid. If I had managed to kill Red, which I very well uh, might have if I had taken the correct pathing or slightly better dice. Uh, then I would have won the game right there, but I didn't need to win the game right there. I think that is the lesson we learn in this game. Because I was ahead by so far that um, I would have won eventually. So there was no reason for me to push it. And now red is dying to pink. Which is not too unexpected. So do I match? No. So now I am in a pretty weak spot all of a sudden. Purple is still weaker than I and I should probably break their one remaining bonus to keep it that way. But now the game is gonna get messy. Maybe I also want to break uh, pink. I think I only really have enough units to break one of them. And I go for purple. Which I think is a um, decent play. Uh, I can kind of guard uh, the kill here. Uh, I'm okay now that I think about it. If I am going to um, guard the kill, then it doesn't really make sense to weaken uh, purple. Or does it? I mean, I, I'm kind of preventing everyone from killing purple here. But I'm also putting myself in harm's way by being here. If uh, green matched and has a big stack and moves uh, through here, then they would move through my 12 uh, to get the kill on purple, which then would put me at a very uh, weak position. But yeah, uh, it seems to be working out for me because purple uh, is hitting green and green is hitting purple back. So that's that's good news. But now suddenly pink is in the strongest position. Pink with uh, two continents and a lot of territory and a match now at 111. Uh, so pink should think about setting up for a kill. This 24 right here, yeah, I even noticed it in game. This uh, does not 
does not make any sense because you don't really guard anything and you can you also can't attack anything so this is one of the worst positions you can put your bonus into you always want to be able to move out and make attacks uh, not like I did, not like over ambitious, <laughs> and then put yourself in a weaker position. Um, but you still want to be able to uh, attack. So this 24 uh, on this spot would make way more sense. Because then you can push all the way into me if you think you have enough units. Why is the audio so broken on this game? It sounds weird. <laughs> okay, uh, so I still didn't have a match. Even with the extra cards, I have to wait until uh, five. So I am on the knife's edge right now. And I am setting up to kill purple. Killing purple is uh, the only way for me to get back into this game. Because pink is too strong, pink generates too many units. Um, I can't really reach green. And so that's why I'm guarding the kill on purple. If I can get the kill on purple, then I won't get the kill on anyone and I will just lose. And that is just the position I put myself in. I think uh, purple is botting out right here. Yeah. So purple is now a bot. Purple doesn't want to play anymore. Green matches and green attacks pink. It probably, I mean, Green may have had enough uh, stuff around to kill purple. Maybe. But attacking pink right there is not the worst idea. Putting your troops right here though is the worst idea because again, you can't attack anything with this. Progressive is all about attacking. so. Putting your uh, troops in this exclusively defensive position doesn't make any sense. And um, conversely, it doesn't make any sense for pink right there to take this back because there's like nothing uh, better that could happen to you than your strongest opponent locking away their own troops. So if I was pink, I would have said, okay, keep those there, I don't care. And then I uh, kill orange in the meantime. While um, pink cannot really be offensive. Okay, now it is time for me to go for the kill on purple. which looks kind of scary, but I just about have the uh, units for this little maneuver. And I also get very good rolls here, so that also could have gone uh, against me. But sometimes lucky is, be is better than being good. So what now? Um, I got a lot of units. I think I can kill green right now. Or maybe not. Maybe now would be the time to again put up a defensive position or maybe break uh, pink. Uh, maybe I'm 
No, I just want to remove Dean from there. I didn't really have to do that attack right now. And yeah, attacking right there was also not a good play. Because this 24, as I was saying, was locked away. So I didn't follow my own advice. My stack right here would have been in the perfect position. Because of um, pink matches now, they could counterattack. But they seem preoccupied with green. Maybe I was also content with going second, so I just wanted to make both my opponents as weak as possible. But generally, I try and play to win, even if the chances are slim. I don't really play for a second or third place. If you're not trying to win, then why would you play at all? And that was probably unintended by Green, putting your troops away like that. So lots of uh, positioning errors you can see here in this endgame. Luckily, uh, pink doesn't match, so they probably will not attack my stack right here. And now I generate 49 units, so that's practically a free match for me. So I am free to take out pink. And I can just ignore this 54 right here. I don't even know why green didn't put it there. Just to have it offensive again. So now I match. And now I just hit everything into uh, green. Oh yeah, and I get the 70%. I again, uh, in, at the end of the game, I again forgot that we are playing 70%. So, yeah, that was this game. And now I'm seeing there were three beginners in this game. So that would explain a lot of the uh, positioning mistakes. But I hope you can see why... Um, uh, why this map works as it does the the continents a couple of the component uh, components continents uh, are very good and you should definitely go for them and uh, pink was actually in a very good spot if pink was uh, a little bit more experienced uh, they could have won the game and if i didn't throw away my good position in the mid game then i could have won sooner <laughs> and purple was just getting unlucky with the bot um, but yeah that's about it i hope you learned something about positioning and this map in particular and yeah i hope you enjoy it uh, like subscribe comment and stuff and i will see you in the next video <laughs>